What's going on, everyone? Your hosts are we back on Courtside Financial with our regularly scheduled programming. Today is November 10th, Monday, November 10th. Appreciate everyone who showed love on the last video, the battery swapping deep dive um, featuring Caitlin. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thank you for uh, watching, showing love and support. But now it's Monday, it's a brand new week, and we're back to do what we do best, breaking down what's going on in real time. And speaking of moves, Firefly is making some serious moves, motor upgrades, ships literally sailing to Europe, North American expansion getting teased for the first time, and William Lee just dropped a bombshell about CATL that has everyone scratching their head. So here's today's story. We got three different stories that paint a picture um, or a roadmap of where Firefly is heading directionally, technologically, geographically, and strategically. And by the end of this episode, you're going to understand why this compact EV that starts at just under 17,000 might be one of Neo's important pieces on the chessboard. So let's get into it, guys. This is Courtside Financial. First up, regulatory filings. I know this sounds boring, but stick with me because these tell us something important about Neo's product strategy. China's Ministry of Industry and Information uh, Technology just dropped their latest catalog of vehicles awaiting approval. And guess what? There's a new Firefly variant with a beefier motor in there. So here are the specs, guys. The new variant packs a 120 kilowatt motor. That's 161 horsepower up from the current 105 kilowatts. So for context, that's about a 14% power bump. Same XPT motor supplier, just more juice. Everything else, identical. Same four meter length, same 2,615 millimeter wheelbase, same five seat layout, same LFP battery, even the same 1,492 kilogram curb weight and 150 kilometers per hour top speed. Now here's what's interesting. The current Firefly doesn't even advertise its zero to 60 time. It's positioned as a cute urban runabout, not a performance car. So why add 15% more if you're not marketing performance? My read, two things. First is differentiation. Right now, there's only one Firefly model at 119,800 rent. That's about $16,830. Adding a higher power variant creates a product ladder. You get the base model for commuting or you upgrade for a little more pep. Classic automaker playbook. Second is about international markets. Remember, Firefly is already delivering in Europe and they just teased North America. Western buyers, especially in places like Germany or Canada, have different expectations for highway merging and acceleration. A 120 kilowatt motor makes Firefly more competitive outside of China and dense urban centers. And let's not forget Firefly delivered 5,912 units in October. That's their third consecutive month of record-breaking performance. The product's working, so now they're iterating. This is what execution looks like. You don't blow up the formula, you refine it. More power, same package, broader appeal. Now let's zoom out from the motor specs and talk about what's happening on the water. Literally, last week, a large batch of Firefly EVs set sail from a port in Shanghai, and the destination was to Europe. So Firefly made sure to announce it loud and proud on Weibo. Here's the current footprint. Deliveries have already started in the Netherlands, Norway, Belgium, and Denmark. And so for Firefly, pre-orders are about to open in Austria, Greece, and Portugal. That's seven European countries in active or near-term phases. But here's what caught my eye. From Firefly's April 19th launch in China to uh, Firefly's European expansion uh, beginning in August 14th. That's less than four months. Firefly said that's um, Neo Inc.'s fastest overseas market expansion in the company's history. Think about that. Neo's been the main brand in Europe since 2021, moving pretty deliberately, building out swap stations, establishing a premium experience. Now Firefly's just speed drumming the whole operation. And the strategy's different too. Firefly's using what they call a national distributor model. Basically Basically partnering with local distributors instead of building tons of NEO houses and NEO spaces. It's leaner, it's faster, and frankly, um, a lot smarter for a mass market play. Now here's where things get really interesting though. Firefly just mentioned North America for the first time. They didn't say which country, but you can read the tea leaves. Um, 
the U.S. is basically closed off to Chinese competitors for right now. So they're either talking about Canada or Mexico. Canada just imposed a 106.1% tariff on Chinese EVs as of October 2024 following the U.S. playbook. But, and this is key, there are reports that Ottawa might be reconsidering. Why? Because Trump's trade war is wrecking their integrated automotive supply chain and Canada's exploring ways to lower barriers with China. Mexico, they've already got BYD, they've already got Zeker selling vehicles there. No tariff walls like the US or Canada. It's the obvious beachhead into the North American continent. So my bet is that Firefly test uh, Mexico first and watches the tariff situation in Canada. Then I think they'll build from there. North America is a massive market. And if Firefly can crack it even at the current margins, that changes Neo's story very significantly and very positively. Okay, so here's where things get spicy because William, William Lee just threw a curveball that basically undermines everything that was said about CATL back in March. Here's the setup. In March 2025, NEO and CATL signed a cooperation agreement to build the world's largest battery swapping network. The announcement specifically said that CATL's Chaco swap stations technical standards would integrate into future Firefly models. But fast forward to last Saturday, William Lee is at a NEO owner event in Shangzhou. Someone asked about CATL integration and Lee says, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't exactly remember, but Firefly won't integrate with CATL's battery swap network. His explanation is that CATL's system uses air-cooled battery packs primarily targeting the ride hailing market. Firefly uses liquid-cooled packs with better safety and performance in extreme temperatures, both hot and cold. Now, some automotive bloggers are saying that Lee might be referencing the current versions of Firefly models, not the future. That tracks with the original March announcement, but still, this is a clarification that raises more questions than it answers. Let me break down what's actually at stake here. CATL's Chaco Swap Network hit 800 stations in China as of November 8th. They're targeting 1,000 by year end, so they've been deploying these things very rapidly and last week GAC ION launched the first mainstream passenger vehicle using the Chaco Swap, the ION UT Super. NEO, on the other hand, operate 3,562 battery swapping stations. They're building 4th gen swapping stations now and 5th gen swapping stations are set to begin trial operations by Christmas. So here's the strategic tension. Does NEO integrate Firefly with CAT CITL's Chaco Swap Network to massively expand compatibility? Or does it keep Firefly locked into NEO's proprietary ecosystem to maintain um, control and quality? Lee's comments um, indicate that they're leaning towards the later and honestly, I get it. Here's my analysis. If Firefly integrates with CATL's um, swapping network, the Chaco swapping station, you get scale. Thousands of swap stations potentially accessible, but you also lose differentiation. You're just another player in CATL's ecosystem. If Firefly stays in Neo's network, you maintain the premium experience, the liquid cooling advantage, and that tight integration with Neo Power. But you limit accessibility, especially in lower tier cities where battery swap stations are already scarce and means of charging are also scarce. Lee also dropped another nugget at the event. He said that Firefly will offer larger battery packs starting at at least 60 kilowatt hours. Right now it's at a 42.1 kilowatt hour um, battery pack with a 420 kilometer CLTC range. A 60 kilowatt hour option would push that to 600 kilometers of CLTC range. So suddenly Firefly would be competing with bigger vehicles. And here's the kicker, Lee reiterated once again at the conference that he is dead set on NEO achieving this first full quarter profitability goal in Q4. He said there are no new model launches or NEO day events in Q4, meaning all the major expenditures are done. It's all about execution and margin for right now. So the CATL thing is not a contradiction, it's a strategy reveal. NEO and CATL are partners on the macro level, level building out battery swapping infrastructure, but on the micro 
level, Neo is keeping Firefly in the premium lane with liquid cooling, better performance, and higher capacity battery pack. All right, so let's tie all these stories together because these aren't different stories. They're all just um, different chapters in the same playbook. Chapter one is product refinement. Adding a 120 kilowatt hour motor gives Firefly pricing tiers and international appear without redesigning the whole car. Chapter 2 is about geographic expansion. Shipping to Europe at record speed, teasing North America for the first time. Firefly is moving fast and it's because it's using a distributor model that's capital efficient. And chapter 3 is strategic positioning. By keeping Firefly in Neo's liquid-cooled premium swap ecosystem instead of integrating with CATL's air-cooled network, Neo is protecting brand differentiation while still benefiting from the broader partnership. So here's the thesis. Firefly isn't just a mass market play. It's a scalability test for Neo's entire international strategy. Think about it. The main Neo brand is premium, slow build, capital intensive. Firefly is fast, flexible, distributor driven. If Firefly proves you can scale internationally without building Neo houses in every city, that changes the cost structure for the entire company. And the battery swap question, that's about maintaining the moat. If every brand uses CATL's swap network, then swap stations become a commodity. But if Neo's network offers superior technology, liquid cooling, higher capacity options, fifth gen stations, then swap becomes a competitive advantage again, not just a table stakes. For us Neo Bulls, here's what matters. Firefly hit 5,912 deliveries in October, and that's with just one configuration one model one configuration now they're adding a power variant shipping to european countries eyeing north america and protecting their technical edge and battery source the execution is here the strategy is coherent and the momentum is real but and there's always a but the tariff situation in north america is very messy on top of that the catl collaboration needs clear communication to avoid investor confusion and scaling internationally while maintaining their voice and stance on having profitability in Q4 is a very uh, thin type tightrope to walk. Those are risk to execution, not strategy flaws. And execution is what separates the winners from the coulda been. All right, everyone, that's my Firefly update. More countries, more power, and a clearer picture of how Neo is positioning this brand for um, global scale. If you're a Neo bull, I think this should make you optimistic, but stay uh, sharp on the details. That's it for this episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. Happy Monday. If you found this episode useful, insightful, at the very least entertaining, leave a comment down below. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. Make sure you click the notification bell icon, uh, hit the like button, and share the video. All that stuff goes a long way in helping us out with the uh with uh reaching a broader audience so happy monday have a great evening i'll see you guys in the next one this is ob signing off goodbye